oh, I am stepping into deep water today. I am just going to pre-warn all of you. Uh, you saw Scott Warwick as soon as the uh, cameras came on. Um, I had to have him back because there's a topic that the two of us are very, very concerned about. And, um, and Scott, this is really down your expertise. I mean, this is, you, you have been living this topic for a long time and I don't know of anyone else who's got better examples of what we are doing wrong in human resources. Um, well, let's just dig in. I mean, I, I, I and mean, you know what, for those of you who know, I sometimes am not overly, um, candid. Um, we're going to talk today about how to, to have a compliant, inclusive policy. And and quite frankly, I'm going to be just out there open. I am so sick and tired of what I'm hearing some companies are doing with their DEI policies. And the comments that I'm getting from employers or HR folks. Um, so I really felt that this was an important topic. It's going to be a little upsetting to some of you. I will just prep you now. Um, and I, I appreciate the number of you that have been following me all these years. But this is a national issue. It is a, it, it's a, it's a very serious uh, issue of humanity on how we're treating each other. And so let's just, let's just go right into it. Scott, again, uh, for those of you who have never seen Scott, Scott Work is a, an attorney and HR consultant in Columbus, Ohio. Has been, my gosh, he's been in the industry for over 40 years. He's been my mentor for over 15. Scott, um, a successful, very successful author. Uh, and Scott has a passion for how we treat each other. And um, let's just jump in, Scott. I, this, this has gone nuts. I think it was a well-intended idea to have diversity, equality, and inclusion policies. I mean, isn't that how you perceive it? Oh, absolutely. And there, there's the old saying, you know, where the best of intentions take you. Um, and, and they are. And, and understand, this is one of those things. And I understand this passion, and I get cautioned all the time, because when we're talking civil rights, okay, um, and you consider where I'm coming from. First and foremost, I was born in 1960. So you can calculate my age real easily there. Okay. Um, I grew up in the most turbulent time in our country for civil rights. I mean, the 1960s into the 70s, Medgar Evers, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, you know, Malcolm X, all these guys are just murdered right in front of us. This is what happened. It was, it Jim Crow in this country was every bit as bad as apartheid in in South Africa. It actually Jim Crow was apartheid. So a lot of horrible injustice, riots. So a lot of work had to be done. And then we started getting uh, the legislation, 1964 Title VII, okay, Civil Rights Act, and all these other types of things. So whenever you have change, you it, you get you know, Newton's law of physics, you get an, op, uh, an equal reaction in the opposite direction. So typically, this is called competitive victimization. Anyone in the DEI and inclusion field needs to know competitive victimization. So you do something to me. I get really mad. I am an emotional child. I don't come to you and resolve the issue. What do I do? I get you back. And then what's that person do? I get you back, get you back, get you back. And pretty soon, everybody's in trouble. The left becomes as bad as the right, and they start fighting each other. This is what has happened in America. We are becoming more and more and more intolerant of each other's opinions. That It, it used to be when I was growing up that if someone disagreed with you, like when Hubert Humphrey lost, this will date me, in 1968, lost the presidential race to President Nixon. Hubert Humphrey went on television and said that he was going to support President Nixon, that he was there to help him. He congratulated him. I was in the second grade, and I turned to my teacher, Miss Humpkins, and she said, I, I said, I'd be really mad 
if I worked that hard and lost? And she said, yes, but he's a gentleman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy, that dates it. Doesn't, that is not happening today. I'm watching a bunch of political children. They all need spanked and not in a good fun way. Okay. This, this is what's happening in America. So what, what's happening? Title seven. Let's look at the law. Okay. Now, can we all agree that you shouldn't break the law? Oh gosh. I, I, you know, cause I will tell you right now, I have federal and state agencies tell me point blank that they are absolutely going to break the law to help the people that they support. See, and this is this is why I think this show is important. I, I really think we need to be very specific on that stuff, Scott. There's so much that's going on, and, and it, it it's wrong. It, yeah. It's wrong. If it hurts anyone, it's wrong. Right. Now, and I'll tell you, and I want you to think about this competitive victimization. I call it boomerang bigotry. Mm. If I am a white supremacist, if I am a, a an intolerant bigot, I'm going to throw my boomerang at somebody and it's going to get them. That boomerang is going to come right back at me. You, This is karma. You will get what you dish out. And each side has plenty of blame. Now, let's look at the law and what is happening. Okay. The law really didn't change a lot for you private sector folks out there with the Harvard decision from the United States Supreme Court last summer that abolished affirmative action in universities, public universities. Okay, so there's a whole discussion there, but just say that it didn't really affect private sector folks aside from the politics of it. And now, overnight, everyone's antennas are up, including the EEOC. So let's look at racial discrimination under Title VII. Okay. Uh, Mark Cuban was testifying before Congress after the Harvard decision. And he said, diversity is a business advantage. I am a big supporter of diversity. And if I see someone who is black or somebody who is female or gender, that's going to help my business, I will hire that person. Okay. Andrea Lucas, who is the uh, commissioner of the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EEOC, that oversees Title VII across this whole country for uh, all private and public sector employers, all right? She came back and said, he is dead wrong about the black letter of Title VII and we're gonna enforce it. If you use a protected class, age, race, sex, as any factor at all, in an employment decision, you've broken the law, and we will get you. Okay, now, so think th- about that. Th- th- and that's where, that's where you and I see so many good intentions. Oh yeah. Employers yeah. standing there and saying, we, "We we've got way too many men around this table, or we've got way too many white people around this table, or we've got whatever yeah, it be- is, too many old people around yeah. this table." Um, yeah. <laughs> and they they specifically can't go on this mission of all right we're we're not going to hire any more people over fifty we're not going to hire any more white men we're not going to hire any white people and, and 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 I'm just you know these are examples but that's yeah, where ones. we get into trouble Scott and 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 they no one's talking about this being illegal why are yeah. they not talking about the, the the truth of whether this is legal or not. Oh yes, because I will tell you, this is like this is like asking someone to change religions. Now understand, uh, uh, for a lot of folks in this country, diversity is a religion. Okay, I I'll give been, you I'll give you that. I th- I think you're right. I mean, how no. many big com- corporations now have full departments of diversity? I will tell you, I just saw on the news yesterday, uh, and I'll tell you, it's all backfiring, and so we got to get legal. And understand, I'm not here to hurt anybody. I'm here to help the DEI people or the inclusion people. But if you keep doing what you are doing, you are not going to be around. You well, will get sued into oblivion because companies across this country are dropping their DEI departments entirely. And that's not what we're trying to do. That that no. will put us right back into the same problems that that got us here. Yeah. So again, help us work on solutions and stick yeah. to what's legal. 
let me give you an example of an illegal practice that should be legal. I'm sitting at uh, 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 my HR association, okay? Speaker gets up and says, you know, there's people out there that need help in their jobs. They need mentorships. That's right. I'm a big fan of mentorships. Help them out. What you need to do, and this is the speaker speaking, you need to set up mentorships for Latino women, for Black uh, employees, to help them. Now, freeze right there. You are basing an employment program on a protected class. It's illegal. You will get caught for that. Because now after Harvard, everybody's antennas are up. There are law firms who have set up since last June specifically for going after employers who violate Title VII on those types of things. It's illegal. It's always been illegal. But today, Andrea Lucas, who is uh, a Biden a point E is saying, no, no more of this stuff across the board. So now think about this. What do you do that's legal? What's wrong with putting in place a mentorship program for everyone? That, why that's that's a part of it. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand why, why weren't the Latinos and the, and the, the, the blacks, why weren't, weren't they offended? I mean, yeah, yeah. why were what they I, not standing up and going, what do you mean I need a mentor? What what about this person over here? Yeah, I think it's like, you know, because honestly, I'll tell you, um, it was kind of funny. My To get away from the bullying, I'm not Catholic, but we life lighted our, both of our sons out of public schools and sent them to uh, Bishop Hartley. Little tag out there. Great school. Uh, 65 to 70 percent black. Oh, wonderful. Who in the heck cares? Who cares? Okay. And, and so the whole idea is, look, if you've got a program that's going to help kids study, you wouldn't do that just for the Latinos. You wouldn't do that just for the Muslims. You would do it for everyone. So you kind of see the mindset is that white people don't need this help. My Latino friends and these other people need help more. No, everyone. They're all your children. They're all human. We need to start treating each other like humans, not like some artificial barrier like your skin color or religion, which quite frankly, let me get this straight. If if I am Jewish and you don't like me, and then I switch to Catholic, now I'm okay? It makes no sense, okay? So, and let me give you an idea on the recruiting, because I'm going to give you a great example of a little bank in Newark, Ohio, and from the people where I live, that's Nurkaha, and um, <laughs> how you recruit. Okay, now I got clients, and I'm sitting there, and I'm telling them what you're doing is illegal, because what I'm hearing, as I'm sitting right there, they're saying, you know, uh, this person that we hire for this position has to be black. They have to be this, or we need to increase this by X number of black employees or Hispanic or Asian or, you know, whatever, that is illegal. And let me tell you, the way that, that the world works today, it's kind of funny because I'm sitting in the room with these people and they're explaining this. And they said, well, I don't know if we should say this in front of Scott. And I'm like, well, understand, I'm your lawyer. Uh, lawyers, doctors, and priests have a right uh, 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 that we don't have to say anything. There's privilege. So how, so how we get caught? You're going to rat each other out, okay? I've never been through a lawsuit in the last five years where we did not get all of your texts, yeah. all of your emails, yeah. and yeah. messages. You and, will have yourself, and you'll lose. It's illegal. Scott, when are, they, when, when are these companies, and when is everyone going to come back to the realization that all we really should be spending our time on is trying to find the best qualified candidate? Period. There you go. There you go. Period. And this is actually, Pandy, you hit it right on the head. Common sense really gets you there. And this is exactly what Sherm is saying. This is what I'm saying. And so what you do, let's go to First Federal, little 54-employee bank in Newark, Ohio. Now, I will tell you, Newark, Ohio, where I am from, which is only like, you know, 30 miles east of Columbus, Ohio, right in the center of the state, is not a very diverse community. Not at all. But this is one of the most diverse workforces you've ever seen. Now, what do they do? What they do, now, it's illegal to set goals that we're going to hire so many, what percentage or so many blacks or whatever. That's illegal. But you can set goals 
to increase your candidate pool. Yes. That's yes. perfectly legal. So here's what they do. They have relationships with historically black colleges. They have relationships with the Hispanic community, the Asian community, the Jewish community, LGBTQ and whatever else there is community. Yeah. 54 employees and they've got transgender employees, gay employees, black employees, Asian employees, Latino employees. You would think that they, I mean, that they, they are breaking the law because it's such a cornucopia of people. What they are doing is they are really putting the effort in and expanding that candidate pool, and they're always finding the best candidate. And guess what? Sometimes the best candidate is somebody who is different than the other folks in the community. And I've never had that trouble of having a diverse workforce because that's what I have always done since 1983. And Scott, it doesn't cost any other money. It doesn't cost any additional time. And and again, to the point of the intention of what they're trying to do, I, I, I'll bet their culture is a whole lot richer than when you've got individuals who, and I'll just go out and say it, who aren't competent in positions and they're, and they're failing, but we're keeping them because they, yeah. they checked a box. And, and I see this so much and I'm just so yeah. tired of it. Oh, I kept my money there. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's not close to my house, but I'm like, now this is a place I can support. I love it. And I will tell you right now that culture's coming out that honestly, what's the culture? I don't care what your skin color is. I don't right. care what your religion is. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. I care about you as a human being. And I'll tell you, they take great care of me. I can get on the phone. I can get a call back. I can talk to somebody. Some of these larger banks, well, I bank at this bank. They wouldn't spit on me if I was on fire. Okay? <laughs> and, but I'll tell you right now, this message right here, I've got a lot of associations and HR chapters that yeah. are telling, oh, we could never tell our people that. Yeah. And, you know, the, it, it go back to your bias training, too, Scott, because I've got a, a bias training of my own. And in there as a recommendation to do the blind screening, do the mm -hmm. blind mm -hmm. interviews, if you have to. And what I mean by that is the person who's choosing, who comes in, who the candidates that will be uh, evaluating, don't tell anybody about them and, and just talk to them on the phone. You, yeah. you don't have to. Sometimes the less information that can be misconstrued or, mm -hmm. again, that a bias can be created is... Right. It, it's just it's just better. It, it's just incredible. Yeah. This, uh, this topic could go on and on and on, no, but you yeah. are absolutely phenomenal in trying to explain this. You've written a very good book on it. Please make sure that they can oh. see that. You see this because let me explain biases and everything. And you see that that is the first book, the, uh, yeah, my second book, but this is the first title because I want to include everyone. And that includes white guys like me. So the first title was Tolerance and Diversity for White Guys and Other Human Beings. And that oh, went over like a bag of rocks. Oh, my God. Now, actually, it's a really big seller, okay? But Good. people buy it because they see the humor in it. This got me death threats. So don't be telling me about how the far, far, far left is so much better than the far, far, far right because I haven't gotten – the, the skinheads and Klan used to tell me that I'm not white anymore. <laughs> Apparently, there was a meeting and there was a vote and I got voted out, okay? Um, and then this book came out. And they thought that was okay. Well, at least we're included. The left, the, uh, the, 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 the folks who are woke. Oh, that's insulting. So I changed the title. They're both out, out there to living the five skills of tolerance. Now, here's how dumb we are. Oh, yeah, I like that book. It's the same book. I just changed the jacket <laughs> cover on it. That's the only thing that changed, okay? Uh, but that's what we're like as people, isn't it? You change the jacket cover. Um, and honestly, I'm a person and I have uh, my avatar. I'm the brain guy. So that's my avatar. And I'm white, white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, straight male. But I purposefully had avatars made up where it's the same person. Uh, and since I'm bald, I don't have to worry about the hair. Where I'm Asian. Where I'm Latino. Where I am uh, black. You're still the same person. And I'll tell you, 
the the far left and the far right got to start understanding that when just boil everything down, if you live in an environment, you work in an environment that is intolerant, you will burn your brain and you will develop mental disorders like I had, post-traumatic stress disorder, and you will develop Alzheimer's. Oh, so gosh. I, now he's going well, into his other book, which, yeah, again, another bestseller. Ladies and gentlemen, you can obtain these books, and they are bestsellers. They, they, there's no exaggeration there. You can obtain those um, mm-hmm. online or okay. go to Amazon. Scott's yeah, go to Scott's website. Yeah. But either way, please understand that this topic is important and we try very, very hard. We're not worried about being politically correct if we can keep you compliant. We want you to understand in an HR role, you have a yeah. huge responsibility, a huge one. Stand up, be that rock, help them understand what truly is what you're trying to accomplish and that's that's to be fair and treat each other with well we can treat each other with respect on this show <laughs> yeah. yeah and it's okay to disagree candy hit it on the head and again let's go back to very basic there are a lot of things you can do right and wrong but the one thing you cannot do is break the law no and Our HR chapters in this country, across this whole country, are teaching you how to break the law. And you need to understand that we've got to change. If we don't change the way that we are dealing with diversity, it will get canceled. So we need to reform it and start focusing on how we're going to include everybody, which is not something we've historically done. We've always had a villain like white men or black. No, nobody's the villain. We're all human. And so, Pandy, you hit it right on the head. You got to comply with the law, but you got to develop a culture where everybody is included. And we don't do that. And, but you can continue watching this show because we okay. want to give you every bit of information and every resource possible. Again, scottwarwick.com or just keep listening here at the Human Resource. Take care.